Let's get salty! Hey everyone, Zeddy here again today with a brand new video and we are continuing our series looking at what the most broken minion in Hearthstone history is. We've gone through the mana cost from one all the way up to seven. Today, we are gonna take a look at what the most broken eight drop of all time is. This will of course all come together in one final episode where we take all these lists put them together and determine what the most broken meaning of all time is. We'll take community feedback, we'll have a poll and everything, and it'll be a lot of fun. So make sure to leave your feedback in the comments below on what you feel the most broken eight drop of all time is. What do I what do I have in the wrong order? What am I missing? I always love to hear it. But anyways, let's take a look at what the most broken eight drop of all time is. So starting off at number 10, we're going with the classic legendary minion. It's a paladin legendary, Tyrion, Four drink, eight mana, six, six, divine shield, taunt minion, and it has the death rattle. If you summon a five, three, Ashbringer, legendary weapon. And this card was very relevant in Paladin for a very long time. It's still in the core set to this very day. Doesn't see a lot of play because it's eight mana and the way the game has evolved, it's pretty nuts. But even saw play, even when it wasn't meta through Zephyrus, Zephyrus would give you Tyrion in a pinch and it was one of the best options you could ever get. Just an extremely reliable, solid card that despite the way the game has evolved over the years, still feels relatively competitive even to this very day. And it's just too iconic not to have on the list. And he's done some good work and also eight drops aren't also that amazing compared to a lot of the other mana costs, especially as you get higher and higher, uh, your, uh, your quality goes lower and lower. It's funny how that works out. So Tyrion definitely to me belongs on the list. At number nine, we have a card that was nerfed and is yet to be reverted. And that is Totoloran Pilgrim, the eight mana five five. Originally, originally this card would discover a copy of a spell in your deck and then you would cast it. So what happened with this card is Potion of Illusion came into the game and your, your turtle, as we would call it, would just potion itself over and over. And then you could play one mana turtles and keep pa casting that and you could put other battle cries where there was like a cloud prince to do damage an antique heal bot to heal up you could get more ice blocks whatever you want this card allowed for some really crazy stuff originally when it came out it was just like a way of cheating out like a ludus pocket galaxy a power creation but because of the way the original card was worded you could do some infinite combo stuff got nerfed to now that it basically casts a spell it doesn't discover a copy of the spell and this card still sees play at its nerf state in like reno uh uh, Reno Mage in Wild. It's a very good card, but originally, my God, you could do some pretty ridiculous stuff with it. At number eight, we have a card that a lot of people saw as a meme, nothing that serious, and then it became a legitimate powerhouse of a card, and that's King Togwoggle. He's a neutral legendary minion, eight mana, five, five, and you swap decks with your opponent. You get to swap your decks, uh, and you add a ransom to your opponent's hands, like a five mana spell. They would cast, and then it would swap the, the, you know, swap the decks back, and it's like, okay you can mess with your opponent maybe get them in fatigue and then naturalize them and fatigue them that way but when you had a card like azelina soul thief you could play Todd Woggle and azelina if you have the mana and you could steal the ransom back and if they try to switch decks you just switched it right back and there's also like a combo with a murazon where if they would play the ransom you would play murazon and play the ransom and switch the deck back a lot of things you could do also just like i said th that fatigue plan actually worked you didn't even need to swap the deck back you play cold light oracles and naturalize and and a lot of cool combos with this card. Really cool, interesting card and very degenerate in certain combo decks. But I love King Togwoggle, got him golden, have played a lot of Togwoggle Druid in my time and I feel like he deserves to be on the list. At number seven, we have the Lich King himself. Neutral, eight mana, eight, eight legendary. And at the end of your turn, you add a Death Knight card to your hand and it could vary. I'll try and show a graphic, all the different Death Knight cards, but you could get like, I think Frostmourne, giant weapon that would resummon the minions it would kill. You could get like a death grip and steal a minion from your opponent's deck, maybe their win condition. You could buff your board with a four mana spell. You could death coil and you could like, it would heal or deal damage. There were a ton of different Death Knight cards, very powerful. And plus it's an eight mana, eight, eight taunt. It's hard to ignore. Doesn't see a ton of play these days, but pops up into some big lists here and there, whether it be a big priest, a big, you know, a big shaman, and, um, very solid card. It saw a ton of play, very iconic, and one of the coolest entrance animations of all time. I gotta give it to Lich King. He's uh, 
pretty badass card and definitely warranted on the list. And number six, we have a pretty recent addition to the list actually from the latest expansion, but this card is a powerhouse and that's Jay Starkweaver. This is an eight mana seven five demon hunter legendary minion, Battlecry, it casts all fell spells. You would play this game, target enemies if possible. So if it's like an I-beam and there's an enemy minion on the board, it'll hit that or if it's a uh, whatever, it, it will target uh, enemies. And this card it has basically spawned fell demon hunter in standard, which is a very powerful deck and it's just a solid card. It's quite reminiscent of Shutterwalk, not quite the same power level, but a very good card. It had been very surprised and fell spells are pretty cool. And I like that it uses the whole spell school, which is a pretty recent addition to Hearthstone. If you're not too familiar with it, you have felt like spells, spells have their own types and fell spells are pretty powerful, often lead to damage and healing and board clears. And well, Jace is just an all around really solid card that will only get more broken over time as there's more fell spells added to the game can only become better. So right now, pretty good spot on the list. And I just think Jace is an incredibly good card. At number five, we have one of the ultimate combo enablers, Geppetto Joy Buzz, eight mana, six, six minion. Battlecry, you draw two minions from your deck and you convert them into one mana, one once. And this card, pretty good when you get a one mana Malago. So one mana Coon, a one mana Abiana, one mana Shutterwalk, a one mana Grumble, all these insane cards you can get. And if you hit that rat, right battle cry, Geppetto is just one of the most ridiculous cards out there. And yeah, has definitely found a home in several combo decks and Someone who loves a good combo deck, I love Geppetto Joy Buzz. Still sees play in WoW to this day, especially with cards like Juicy Psych Melon that kind of tutor this one out pretty well. So Geppetto has popped up in a ton of decks towards standard and WoW's history, still does to this day. So definitely a top five on the list. At number four, I am gonna go with a classic legendary that is so iconic, so classic, you can get it in diamond. And that is Ragnaros the Fire Lord, eight mana, eight, eight, elemental legendary minion. Can't attack, but it deals eight damage to a random enemy. And my God, this card is just, it's Ragnaros. It's, it's been, it's influenced cards like Janelai, the Dragon Hawk, the Warrior Quest, the original Angora Warrior Quest is just an insanely good card. It's still, to this day, can pop up in wild, typically through like a big priest type of list, but it still sees play. And he's such an iconic card. He has won and scammed more games than most other expensive legendaries ever can because eight damage is eight damage. And that eight damage can go face and murder your opponent. You can even pair it with a Jakari Enchanter and get 16 damage to go. So yes, Ragnaros may have fallen down the level, power level throughout the years, but he's so iconic. He's so ridiculously good. And the fact that he still, to this day, could still kind of pop up. Hell, you could play Major Domo and turn yourself into Ragnaros. There's tons of implications with it. And uh, I just, I feel like it would be wrong to have the eight mana spot, not have Ragnaros on the list. So I'm putting him probably maybe a little bit too high, but I love the card regardless. At number three, we have a Mage Epic Minion. It's an elemental, it's an eight mana, eight, eight mana giant. Costs one less for each spell you have cast this game that didn't start in your deck. And well, when you have cards like Sorcerer's Apprentice, Magic Trick, Elemental Evocation, or just Evocation in general, this card would come down relatively cheap. And you pair this up in wild with Open the Waygate, Mana Giants would just murder your opponent. Be very, there'd be zero mana pretty quickly, take an extra turn, and your opponent is dead. It was just incredibly powerful minion and uh, surprisingly never left the eight mana spot and eight mana eight eight ain't particularly bad you get one or two mana cheats on it it's pretty good and then yeah as you guys know zero mana giants that we've seen over time have been pretty busted and even conjurer's calling get to eight drops just a ridiculous card and it saw a ton of play in standard of wild and is just definitely warranted on the list. At number two, we have another Demon Hunter card, another eight mana Demon Hunter card. Illidari Inquisitor has eight mana, eight, eight rush, and it will also attack with your hero attack. So also known as King Rush or Green Rag, whatever you want to call it, it's it's King Rush. Um, basically it has Wind Fury right out the gate. You get that rush effect, you hero, you he attack the opponent's face, you deal eight. If they leave it on the board, he can attack twice face the next turn. You can get it back with Nizoth because it's a demon. Just a ridiculous card that power kept power crept on King Crush, power crept on like Alex Straza, just power crept on Ragnaros, which we just talked about. An unbelievable card, not even a legendary. 
and doesn't see a lot of play these days. Well, maybe after these nerfs, he might pop up a bit more. But regardless, Illidari Inquisitor, one of the most busted eight drops of all time. And before we get to number one, let's go through a bunch of honorable mentions just in case uh, you guys want to yell at me that I forgot certain cards. So, so let's go through them. We have Katrina Winterwisp, Alakir the Windlord, Deathwing Mad Aspect, Gromash, Troublemaker, Ignorous Light Lord, Tess Greymane, Walking Fountain, Archwitch Willow, Archaeivis Elysiana, Kel'Thuzad, Mordresh Fire Eye, Mirrors on the Infinite, and Varian King of Stormwind. So, what is the number one most broken eight drop of all time? Well, it like never costs eight mana ever. It's like zero. And actually now it starts at 10 and goes to zero. It got nerfed twice and it, it, it's flesh giant. This card is ridiculous. Warlock minion, eight mana, eight, eight. It costs one less for each time your hero changed health on your turn. And well, at eight, it became zero by like turns like two and three in wild and four and five in standard. And it got nerfed to nine and they got nerfed to 10. And even at 10, it comes down where ridiculously early and is a ridiculously good card because the self damage effects are so crazy in warlock in particular in wild and well um until recently warlock was all over the place because of the demon seed because of how broken flesh giant was at eight and well now He's still pretty busted and he costs two mana more to start. So just imagine what that was like at eight mana all the way back in the day, like like three weeks ago. So there you go. That's my list. Let me know in the comments below what you agree with, disagree with. And well, we'll be taking a look at nine drops pretty soon. So hit that sub button. If you enjoy the video, please like it. Have a great day and stay salty, my friends.